Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Two missiles were fired overnight toward a warehouse in the vicinity of Syria's international airport in Damascus in an attack official Syrian news outlets attributed to Israel. Amid a drastic deterioration of the Islamic Republic's economy, Iranian authorities have been warning Iranians against staging demonstrations against the regime, which according to the Iranian leadership could turn the Islamic Republic into another Syria. In a first official visit by a British royal to Israel, Prince William started his official tour to the Jewish state after a brief visit to the country's eastern neighbor Jordan. Two missiles were fired overnight toward a warehouse in the vicinity of Syria's international airport in Damascus in an attack official Syrian news outlets attributed to Israel. According to local sources, Syria's aerial defense systems failed to intercept the sophisticated missiles, which reportedly destroyed their target. Intelligence sources told TV7 that the warehouse contained advanced weapons that were transported to Syria from Iran by means of civilian aircrafts destined to be used by Iranian-sponsored militias, including Hezbollah. A senior Syrian defense official rejected the reported contents of the warehouse, pointing to only minor damage to the targeted structures, which would not have been the case if the warehouse contained missiles. The official further noted that it was clear in Damascus that Israel was behind the attack, pointing to similarities vis-a-vis -vis previous airstrikes by the Israeli Air Force, while underscoring that no casualties were reported as a result of the strike. The Israeli military did not confirm nor deny its involvement in the airstrike, stressing to TV7 that it does not discuss foreign reports on alleged operations of any kind. Now to Tehran, where Iranian authorities have been warning Iranians against staging demonstrations against the regime, which according to the Iranian leadership could turn the Islamic Republic into another Syria. Amid growing concerns of crippling international sanctions that were reimposed by the United States against the Islamic Republic, Iran's currency, the rial, plunged to a new all-time low against the U.S. dollar, being offered for as much as 87,000 rials this week, compared to around 74,000 before the weekend. The fall of the national currency has provoked a public outcry over the quick rise of prices of imported consumer goods, with thousands of Iranians flooding the streets of Tehran, calling on Iranian President Hassan Rouhani to resign. The Iranian leader, however, rejected the public's call for his resignation, vowing to continue to withstand Washington's pressure that, according to Rouhani, seeks to end Iran's Islamic revolution. آیا امروز آمریکا با جنگ روانی و اقتصادی و بعد سیاسی و یا حتی راههای دیگر می تواند ملت ما را بشکند این ملت مقاوم این سرو سرفراز تاریخ این ملت غیور و قدرتمندی که همه جا برای اسلامش برای ایرانش حاضر است جان بدهد خون بدهد حیثیت بدهد هدف اونها در تمام مراحل از سال پنجا و هشت تا سالهای اخیر یک هدف بیشتر نبود و اون اینکه انقلاب اسلامی پایان یابد ملت ایران در برابر استکبار تسلیم شود in his address, which was broadcast live on state television, Rouhani claimed that the United States would pay for its actions against the Islamic Republic, noting that the world views Washington's decision to withdraw from the 2015 multinational nuclear agreement as a clear violation, a move that clearly will harm the United States' international standing. <laughs> قطنامه شورای امنیت زیر پا گذاشته برخلاف مقررات بین المللی عمل کرده یعنی ما کاری کردیم که آمریکا با بالاترین هزینه این کار رو انجام بده بالاترین هزینه رو آمریکا تحمل کرد while the Iranian president claimed international support for the nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic, 
U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo stressed during an exclusive interview he gave to the MSNBC Hugh Hewitt show that the Iranian leadership must recognize that if they begin to ramp up their nuclear program, the wrath of the entire world will fall upon them. I hope the Ayatollah and Soleimani, uh, the prime drivers of Iranian uh, threat posture, I hope they recognize that whatever decision other countries make about staying in the JCPOA or however they proceed, I hope he, they understand that uh, if they begin to ramp up their nuclear program, the wrath of the entire world will fall upon them. The comments by the American top diplomat came after the leaders of the European partners to the deal, including Germany, France and the United Kingdom, asserted their ongoing aspiration to preserve the nuclear agreement with Iran. It underscored their concerns of the Islamic Republic's malign activities across the Middle East and its ballistic missile program that has the capacity to carry nuclear warheads. While those concerns were conveyed to Tehran, the Iranian leadership emphasized to their European counterparts time and again that they will not renegotiate a multinational agreement. Meanwhile in Washington, U.S. President Donald Trump held a meeting with Jordan's King Abdullah, during which the two leaders discussed regional challenges and bilateral relations. When asked when the White House would release its peace initiative for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, President Donald Trump declined to comment on the matter, yet emphasized that a lot of progress has been made in the Middle East. I can only say this, and His Majesty knows we're doing very well in the Middle East. A lot of progress has been made in the Middle East, a lot. And it really started with the end of the horrible Iran deal. That deal was a disaster. and. Uh, Things are a lot different since we ended that, a lot different. Thank you all very much. Now to Israel, we're in a first official visit by British royal to Israel. Prince William landed last night in the Ben Gurion International Airport after a brief visit to the country's eastern neighbor, Jordan. The 36-year-old grandson of Queen Elizabeth and second in line to the throne started his visit in the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial Museum, where he paid homage to the six million Jews that were murdered during World War II. Following the ceremony, Prince William was welcomed by Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu at his residence in Jerusalem, where the two discussed, among others, the historic significance of the United Kingdom in assisting the Jewish people to establish a nation-state in their biblical homeland. Welcome, that's welcome. welcome to Israel. Great historic visit. The whole people of Israel are excited. Oh, and we also wish you a happy birthday. Oh, that's very kind. It's actually remembered. <laughs> During the rest of his tour, Prince William is expected to visit religious sites as well as the grave site of his great-grandmother, Prince Alice, on the Mount of Olives. Prince William will travel tomorrow, among other stops, to the West Bank city of Ramallah, where he's expected to meet with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. While a spokesman for the prince acknowledged the well-known and complex challenges in the Middle East, he emphasized that William's tour, like other visits abroad by members of the British royal family, will be non-political. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and its region, please join our Facebook page or our YouTube channel at TV7 Israel News. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.